I imagine two cities, A and B, where city B is directly north of city A. And imagine that we want to travel from city A to city B by plane. Now, let's assume that the plane has a speed of 200 kilometers per hour. And if there was no wind, we could fly directly from city A north up to city B at a speed of 200 kilometers per hour. But let's add in some interference. What if there is wind? So what if there is a windshield of say 60 kilometers per hour? And so the wind is blowing from or coming from the northwest. So now we can no longer aim the plane directly up north from city A to city B as the wind will cause interference. It will push the plane off of its trajectory. So we have to figure out how do we realign the plane's direction so as to have a net travel path directly north from city A to city B. So let's draw a picture first. Let's visualize this using a vector. So if you look at the northwest, so you can look at say traditional XY coordinates. So if the wind is blowing from the northwest, so northwest, that means that the wind is coming in from the northwest and it will form a 45 degree angle. So 45 degrees and here we're going to work in degrees. So you can draw the vector corresponding to the wind in such a fashion. So because the wind is blowing from the northwest, well the angle here, of course, same as the angle here and here, as we have here a 90 degree angle. So the, the angle here is 45 degrees, blowing directly from the northwest. So right down the middle between north and west. And because the wind is blowing at 60 kilometers per hour, the length of this vector is 60. And here we will drop the units for now, but we are talking about here a velocity vector. 60 kilometers per hour, so the length of our vector is 60, and the angle here is 45 degrees below the x-axis. So we have a vector. We have the direction of our vector given in degrees from the x-axis, and the length of our vector, 60 again kilometers per hour. Well, we want the net result of the velocity vector of the plane with the velocity vector of the wind to give us a vector that is perfectly headed north. So let's now put these two vectors together and add in the missing vector for the plane. We have the direction of the, we have the length, sorry, of our velocity vector for the plane. The length will be 200 kilometers per hour, but we are missing the direction. And that's what we're trying to figure out. What should the direction of the plane be? So as the net result of the velocity vector of the plane and the velocity vector of the wind gives us a net velocity vector moving perfectly north. Well, let me read other picture here. So this is our objective, right? To have a vector that is headed perfectly north. Well, what are the forces on the plane? The first one is the wind vector. And then acting on the airplane, of course, is the airplane itself. So plus the unknown vector unknown in direction. We have its length as far as the velocity, but we're missing the direction. So let's add in what we have here. So this is the wind vector plus the plane vector. 
and we want the net result of adding the velocity vector from the wind, the velocity vector from the plane, to be a vector that is headed perfectly north. So we know that the velocity vector has a magnitude of 60 kilometers per hour, thinking of speeds, and as we've said, the speed of the plane is 200 kilometers per hour, so this is 200, again, kilometers per hour. What else do we know? Well, and you should notice that we now have a triangle, right? Well, we know this angle here. If you look back, we have the perpendicular, that is our objective, a direction that is perfectly headed north, plus the 45 degrees. So we have here 90 degrees, plus the 45 degrees, so the angle here is 90 plus 45, so 135 in degrees. So let me reproduce this triangle and use the familiar ABC alpha beta gamma setup, and hopefully this will make things more familiar. So I will reproduce the picture. at the very minimum trying to. Let's call this C, A, and B. And the opposite angles using the corresponding Greek letters. So here alpha, opposite to B, beta, opposite to C, gamma. And notice that we now have three known quantities. We know B, we know A, and we know beta. So we can use the law of sines, given that we know the value of B and its opposite angle, and we know the value of A, we can use the law of sines to find the angle opposite to A. Right? If you recall, let me write it here. So we know that sine of alpha over A equals the sine of beta over b, uh, sorry, sine of beta over b. And if you look at this equality, there is only one unknown, right? We know beta, we know b, we know a, and the only unknown is alpha. So we can now solve for alpha. So the sine of alpha is A over B sine of beta. To solve for alpha, we invert the sine, so we take the arc sine. So alpha is the arc sine of A over B sine of beta. And now we can replace A is 60 over B is 200 times the sine of beta, which is 135. Now, make sure you set your calculator in degrees, not in radians. Calculated this, take the arc sine of this value. What you will find is approximately ba -ba 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 -ba, 12 Point twenty five degrees if we round off to the second decimal place. So we now have the value of alpha. And we can now easily obtain the missing angle, gamma, since we know that for any triangle, the sum of the interior angles is 180. You can write it here as a reminder. If you add the interior angles triangle in degrees, you get 180 degrees. As we now know alpha and beta, we can solve for gamma. So gamma being 180 minus alpha minus beta
then what you will find, if again, if you round off to the second decimal place, is that gamma will be approximately 32. Yes, 32.75 degrees. So we now have the three angles. We know alpha, beta, and gamma. So let me put it here. So alpha, approximately 12.25 degrees. Beta, here we had an exact value for beta, 135, and gamma, approximately 32.75 degrees. Now we have all the angles. So do we have the direction for our plane, right? Well, let's see here. This is the velocity vector of the plane. Its magnitude, the speed, is 200 kilometers per hour. What we're missing is the orientation, the angle. Well, we can play a bit of a trick here, right? Let me add in, as a dotted line, another vertical. Recall this was the objective, a perfectly vertical vector pointing up north. And the angle here, alpha, we know. And if you recall, now you have two parallel lines. And this cuts through them in a segment. And we know that this angle equals this angle. And we know alpha, which gives us the direction of the plane, its trajectory. Right? If we view alpha as the angle off of the north position. So we can now give an answer. So the direction of the plane should be alpha degrees west of north. And alpha degrees is about 12. 25. As we've just said, this is west of north. So the plane should be headed not or aimed at not directly the north direction, but about 12.25 degrees west to the left of the north direction. And we can ask one last question. Now we know in which direction we should aim the plane so that the net result of the velocity vector from the wind and the velocity vector from the plane is a vector headed, pointing directly up north, which will bring us from city A to city B. We can also ask, what is the net speed of the plane. We know we have to head the plane in this direction in order to move directly up north from city A to B because of the wind factor. But what will be the net speed of the plane? Well, let's see, right? Adding the velocity vector of the wind plus the velocity vector of the plane gives us the net velocity vector for the plane. So what we want is the length of this segment, which will give us the speed of the plane. We want the length of C. So how do we find the length of C? Well, we now know essentially everything else, right? We know the three angles, alpha, beta, gamma. We know A and B. So we know we can find C using the law of cosines. So let me remind you of the law of cosines here. So we know C squared is A squared plus B squared minus twice of AB cosine of the angle opposite to C, which is gamma. We now want C, so we'll simply take the square root on both sides. 
So let's write this down. So the answer will be the square root of, so C is the answer, is the square root of, so A squared plus B squared minus twice of AB cosine of gamma. Let's replace. So, ba, 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 ba. A was 60, B was 200. So 60 squared plus 200 squared minus 2 times 60 times 200 times the cosine of gamma. And gamma we found to be 32.75 degrees. Of course, the square root of this is C. And again, here using a calculator set in degrees, you will find an approximate speed, net speed for the plane of 153.02 kilometers per hour. And now we have completely solved the problem. So if we have as objective to moving from city A straight up north to reach city B, knowing that the plane can fly at 2 kilometers per hour and there is a wind shield from the northwest of 60 kilometers per hour, in order to travel straight up north with this windshield factor, we have to aim the plane, orient the plane at about 12.25 degrees west of north, right? Point the plane in this direction. The wind shield factor will then create a net velocity vector perfectly up north. So we are heading in the right direction with this orientation of the plane. And the net result will be with the velocity vector of the plane and the um, velocity vector of the wind will give us a net speed of 152, 153.02 kilometers per hour. And this is how you can use geometric vectors and basic trigonometry to solve this rather interesting navigation problem.